Well, finally, we have a DaVinci Resolve tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna go through five techniques to get you started using DaVinci Resolve Fusion so you can create some awesome motion graphics. And before we jump in the video, I have one request for you. If you do wanna see more Resolve tutorials from me, please leave a comment on this video letting me know that and also drop a like. If you made the switch from Adobe to Resolve, also I'm very interested in hearing about why you made that switch. So please share your story in the comments below. So let's jump in and create some awesome motion graphics in Resolve. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve and let me show you how you can get started with your first fusion composition so you can start creating motion graphics. The first thing you wanna do when you open DaVinci Resolve is go to your edit tab, which is down here. So in order to create motion graphics, we need to right click on our media pool window here and we need to select new fusion composition. You can name it whatever you like, change the frame rates and click create. And then just bring this fusion composition into your timeline. And then all you need to do is select it and click on this fusion icon down here. So in our first technique I wanna talk about is how to effectively create an awesome background. So the first thing you wanna do is you have a handful of tools here. On the left, there's a background symbol. All you wanna do is just drag and drop this in here and you'll see this box icon. You'll go ahead and click and drag this to your media out like this. So right off the start, we have a black background and you can come here to color and change it to whatever you like and the color will change. However, I wanna be a little bit more advanced and show you how to create a gradient background. So you can go to type and set this to gradient and you may change the gradient type to whatever you like. I'm gonna set it to radial. And you'll have your gradient color swatches down here. And we just click on one of these, click on color, and we can select a nice color. And we can select something like this color right here. Make sure you copy the hex code, click OK. And then go to the next color tab and change that color to the same color, but then also we'll make this a little bit darker and click OK. And then we can adjust our radial background here. So we have the X, Y positions right here and we can just move this over here towards the center, which will be 0.5. And then you can stretch out the end to expand this however you see fit. So now we have a nice gradient background here in DaVinci Resolve. So next up, I wanna talk about how to work with text here in DaVinci Resolve and also animate it. So right here, we have our text. All we need to do is click and drag this to our line, and this will add this to our current uh, node graph. And this will create a merge between our background and media out, and you'll see our text is right above that. So it's probably best to work with your node graph from left to right. And anytime you wanna add an additional element to your node graph, you need to make sure that there's a merge graphic, which I'll go a little bit more in depth as we move on this video. For now, let's select our text node, and we come here to text and type in our title. So I'll do motion graphics, for example. And you can hit enter your keyboard, and that'll create a line. You can come here to font, you can change this to whatever you like. I'll use Beep as new. We can increase the size here. You can adjust the tracking or the line spacing, whatever you see fit to do. So what I wanna do is change the color of one of these titles, but if I come here to color, it's gonna go ahead and change the color of the entire graphic. So, so to change the color of just one word, what we need to do is right click here in the text box and click on character level styling. Okay, then we can come here to our display, click and just drag, select the letters that you wish to change the colors of, then come here to modifiers here underneath the inspector. And then you can go straight to the color right away and change this to whatever color you wish. And you'll see that it'll only change the colors of those letters. And then you can easily just change the size of that graphic or whatever you see fit. All right, what about animating the text? Well, I'll go back to tools and there's a lot of ways that you can animate text. I'm gonna keep it very simple for this video. I'm gonna actually use something called right on here, which I thought was a really cool property that they included. So we'll come here to about 20 frames and we'll add a keyframe for right on. Just click that icon right there. And we'll come here to zero frames and set the end all the way to zero. And now this will do a, just a right on animation. So in After Effects, you would use the graph editor. In DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna use the spline, which is essentially the same exact thing. Just make sure the text is selected and you can hit zoom to fit right here. And this will show us our linear keyframes. We can select both of them and hit S on our keyboard and this will create like an easy ease animations. And when we select our keyframes, you'll see that we have handles here. We can drag these out to, you know, change the speed of the animation on our own. So now if we take a look at what we have, the animation is completely customized. And we can animate this even further. So like right when this animation is done, we can add a keyframe for size and then we can move forward by like a couple of frames and then just drag down the size by a little bit. And here's what we have. You can pretty much animate whatever you want. And we can customize the text even more by going to say transform, go to shear, and we can like slightly, you know, skew our text by a little bit. You can also rotate your text in 3D space without making it a 3D layer. So that's really cool. A lot of cool options that you have available here in Resolve. All right, so now let's take this even further by adding some legitimate motion graphics by creating these line animations, which are just fun to create. So what we want to do is grab the polygon tool, which is essentially the equivalent of the pen tool in After Effects or any Adobe software. 
and you'll see that you have the pen tool selected here at the top. And all we want to do is just create custom paths for our line. And instead you could actually use the B spline tool, which will allow you to create perfect curves. So as I add points, you'll see that we have these curves here. You can adjust the points and then continue to, uh, you know, circle out your line or whatever you want to do. So I actually like this tool a lot, but we have this custom path here. So you can see that we have our B spline here that's not connected to our current tree. So what I can do is add a merge node and then I can double click our current line and connect merge one to merge two and then connect merge two to media out. Then I can click our green triangle here and connect it to B spline. And now we'll be able to work this in here. And if I come here to border width and increase this, now we have this nice stroke here. Uh, but how do we animate this? So let's go back to about frame zero or whatever. And we can come here to length and set this down to zero. And then we can add a keyframe for length, move forward in time, and then set the length up to one again. And then we want this to kind of close in on itself. So we'll go to like maybe frame six, add a keyframe for position, go past frame 20, maybe to 30 frames or something and set the position to one. So now our line will be fully animated. However, you'll see that we have a circle left over. To fix this, I'm just gonna click on the border style and set it to flat and that will remove it. And then we'll go to our spline tab. And if the spline's too messy, you can deselect certain elements that you don't wanna animate. So we can say, just select position real quick, select all the keyframes, hit S on keyboard, go to length. Then we can select all the keyframes and hit S on keyboard and this will smooth it out. So now that we have the animation done, what about duplicating this process and making it much quicker? Well, all we need to do is just copy the spline, paste it in here and it's automatically connected. So then we can select this, you know, the top spline and then we can just come here and delete the points out of this line. And now we can effectively come here and start creating uh, more lines. So now we just create another line like this and then we can just copy paste, select one of the splines, delete the current mask and start drawing out more. So now we have a third line. We can do it one more time. So now I have four lines in here and what about offsetting them in time? So we come here to keyframes again. You can see that we have our B splines and all we need to do is select the layers and you can just offset them in time so they don't all come in animating at the same exact moment. So now if we run through this, here's what we have. So moving on, we're gonna create these circle burst animations which provide a lot of awesome detail uh, to your project. Okay, so to create a circle, first we need to create a background. We can just drag this and bring this to our current node tree and we'll get merge three and we have our background here. We can change our background color to whatever we want. We'll set it to white, click OK. And then we can grab the ellipse tool, bring this on top of our background, connect it to our background, and then deselect solid and increase the uh, border width. And now we have this hollowed out circle. Then I want to be able to obviously animate this. So to animate this, I want to add a transform property. I'll go ahead and select background two and click this transform icon. And this will apply this to our current node tree already connected. So then we can select transform one. We can come here to the beginning of our timeline we can set the size to zero. We can add a keyframe for size, move forward in our timeline, and then increase the size. And this will scale up our circle. And then we go back to ellipse one, we can adjust the border width so we can make it a little thicker, but then I wanna animate this out. So right before our scale is complete, let's add a keyframe for border width, move forward by a little bit, and then set the border width to zero. So now we'll have the circle animation, but what about duplicating it and quickly variating it? Well, it's actually very easy to do this. So then we go to our effects tab by clicking effects here at the top. We can open the tools tab and then just go to effect and you'll see duplicate. Select transform your node graph and double click the duplicate effect. This will add it to our node graph exactly where we want it, which should be right underneath transform. So then what we can do is increase the number of copies, which will, the max is 10. We can come here to jitter and it offset the center X and Y, and this will randomly move our uh, circles around our project. You can then go back to controls, adjust the Y center so we can make sure everything is here, you know, correctly in our composition. And then you can also adjust the size. This will randomize the circle sizes, which is really nice. And then I'll come here to time offset, set to the negative value. So now our circles will animate in separately and that's really awesome. So everything is coming together. We have this really cool graphic, but what about just adding some overall effects uh, to our graphic? Well, if you want to add like a film grain effect, well, what we can do is come here to film. We can grab film grain, uh, select a merge three and just double click this in here. And this will add it to our node graph. And you'll see that we have film grain here. And by default, it automatically applies this filter. So you can go through different filters available and apply them uh, to your node graph. And you'll see you don't need a merge node, but we can come here to controls and we can change the sizing or strength or whatever of our film grain. 
uh, and this will can help make a difference in our work. So now with all of our techniques combined, you should have the basic understanding to create a very cool motion graphic here in DaVinci Resolve. All right, and don't forget to drop a comment down below if you wanna see more uh, DaVinci Resolve tutorials from me. And if you're new to our channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button because we're all about motion graphics and always be creative.